I'm just going to find edge pieces because I don't have to yeah, pay attention well, like to this. anything other than the shape. It'll have a black ear on it. Jackie and David Spearman tackle the sort of insanely detailed puzzles that demand nothing less than a divine level of patience and persistence. Oh, wait. Look, there it is. Ah! <laughs> At 77 years old, their life and retirement is filled with friends, family, volunteer work, and this. I've always been a real supporter of research. No kisses. To me, it doesn't, it's not painfully loud. And the lights are not nearly as bright as you would think they are. They start out bright. But then either your eyes adjust or something. And so they're not, they're bright, but they're not, I don't find them to be annoying. Okay. A retired psychotherapist, Jackie is part of a first ever human trial called Flicker. Except these have to go on first. As the name suggests, Jackie wears these glasses that flicker light 40 hertz, 40 times per second, along with a headset that turns a tone on and off 40 times per second. She's been doing this an hour a day for almost a year. I suspected something before anybody else did. Jackie was diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment, often a precursor to Alzheimer's disease. I was having a hard time with names, but I've always had a little bit of trouble with names. And all of my friends that are my age, you know, I'd say something and they'd say, oh, me too, I know, oh, we all do that. No, that's just normal, it's age, it's just aging. And so everybody would argue with me. So I have to ask you some questions. OK. Jackie qualified to be one of 10 people in the world in the study. It's not Emory Brain Health's Dr. James Law is the lead investigator in the study. Flickr is um, our first attempt to try and see if we can translate a very promising uh, potential treatment strategy, a completely novel one, uh, that has shown great promise in uh, preclinical or animal models of Alzheimer's disease. Georgia Tech and Emory professor and research scientist Dr. Annabelle Singer was part of a team at MIT that created what came to be called Flickr. Like these flashing lights, our very brains flicker. These brain waves, or rhythms in the brain, happen when neurons oscillate on and off together. The connections, or talkings, between neurons is important for our memories to work like they should. When we are recalling a memory, it's known as replay. Replay is the same patterns of activity that you see during an experience get replayed. Literally like, you know, football replay when you're watching sports. And we think that that is important for memory because it helps bring back those experiences for your brain to uh, strengthen connections between cells, kind of like the same way you strengthen a muscle, you know, getting that, your brain to practice that activity over and over again. But when amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary or tau tangles build up in the brain, it's thought they can disrupt this important rhythm, hurting communication between neurons. We saw fewer of these replay events, and we also saw a lack of what we call gamma oscillations. These are uh, oscillations around 30 to 50 hertz that people have studied in many different brain regions. In uh, the hippocampus, which is important for memory, during this replay, we think it's important for coordinating many neurons to fire together, to behave together. So that deficit inspired us to stimulate at gamma to uh, potentially alter the course of the disease. This is a mouse undergoing flicker. Singer and the team discover that when they flash lights at mice with Alzheimer's disease at 40 hertz, 40 times per second, similar to the brain's waves, the amount of amyloid plaques in the brain drop dramatically. To make the clearing out even more effective, they added a clicking sound also at 40 hertz. When the mice were put through cognitive test, they performed dramatically better, such as remembering an object they'd seen before or where to find a platform in a pool. The lights did something else that was remarkable. In addition to getting groups of neurons to respond to the stimulation, they also activated the brain's immune cells called microglia. Microglia are like trash men, except the trash they are taking out is amyloid. 
As the only immune cells native to the brain, microglia may play a critical role in determining the course of Alzheimer's disease. There's been evidence for many, many years that microglia under certain um, activation states will gobble up the amyloid that's accumulated inside the brain. Now what we don't know is, um, you know, in terms of um, what the duration of the effect is. It takes a lot of discipline. Having flicker be effective in mice is one thing. Having it work in humans is another. It's not obvious, actually, that you should do the exact same thing in mice and humans. And humans are much more complicated. So first, I'm going to listen to your heartbeat. To measure if it's working, Jackie and the others undergo MRIs and PET scans and spinal taps and EEGs and blood draws. In all of our brains, amyloid and tau are constantly being made and constantly being cleared. One thing that could be going wrong in Alzheimer's is that they're being produced too much. Another thing that is could be that they're being cleared too slowly. That's why flicker is not a one-time thing. The results in mice showed that. If you do the stimulus just for an hour and look in sensory brain regions, the effects last for a couple hours. So the reduction in amyloid beta, for example, lasts for four to eight hours. By 24 hours, it's back uh, to normal. Amyloid builds up in the brain 20 or more years before symptoms begin. We're starting to see some evidence that in patients who have mild cognitive impairment from Alzheimer's disease, even though those people also have had this amyloid for many, many years, um, if we catch them at that very early mild cognitive impairment stage, doing things that remove the amyloid may yet benefit those individuals. We think it would be uh, something that you do every day, potentially. And it might be something that you even start long before Alzheimer's. So maybe you start, like you brush your teeth, you know, starting when you're a little kid. You might start this when you're in middle age, long before you're worried about cognitive decline. <sighs> Lola and Paco keep Jackie company for her daily flicker session. I don't know if the flicker's doing anything or not, but it's not, it wouldn't cure me this fast anyway. Uh, I don't think it is a cure. I don't think they're looking for it, a cure. I think that maybe it's slowing it down. Results from this first human trial will come later this year. If it's successful, bigger studies will follow. You can watch Mrs. Maisel. Okay, turn it on. In the meantime, Jackie holds tight to hope, <laughs> to laughter, and to life with her best friend of more than half a century. But it also gave me hope that even if it doesn't come to fruition in time to help me, maybe it will to help some people that are on down the line.